One of the challenges we have in Ghana is that we have ignored the true leaders and so called leaders are leading us, including myself. We are just giving a mandate for a few days. I was given a mandate for only four years to be the right honorable speaker of parliament. And you all know it was done by no other person but the Almighty God in the Senate. Pastors, presiding elders, members of the regional coordinating committee, apostles, evangelists of all denominations and all brothers and sisters in Christ, I knew God has unleashed his friends into this nation. And that we will not only be healed, but we will be reconciled in him. But before I go further, let me express my very deep gratitude to the church for calling all the leaders of this country to the National Moral Development Conference last year. I was there. It was great, it was marvelous, and it was least, even then, the spirit of God throughout the whole nation. It was a conference of national unity. It is not only the political leaders, but the true leaders, not politicians. We are just giving a mandate for a few days. I was given a mandate for only four years to be the right honorable speaker of parliament. And you all know it was done by no other person but the Almighty God in the Senate. You are incarnate, the true leaders of the people, until you reconcile with you. And so, it is an anatomy for governance to always rule without the true leaders of the people. I think we have to look at it again. You don't need to be a partisan person to be a leader. You don't need to be a partisan person to be in government, to be a president. One of the challenges we have in Ghana is that we have ignored the true leaders and so called leaders are leading us, including myself. And so when we talk, the people are looking up to their leaders to scare them, not us. And you cannot deform. When you don't believe and you don't trust your leader, because you are going to do the development, not the leader, I think it's an issue that we have to really look at as a nation. National leadership. And I'm always happy that the Church of Pentecost. The spirit of God that was unleashed on the world who lead us in this direction. Again, I have the honor, the privilege to, on behalf of the members of parliament, thank the Church of Pentecost once more. For giving us a fresh breath of air when we in Parliament had to look at very critical bills. And the church 
through his leadership, were there to lead us. We have very strengthened ideas to nourish the meal on family values. And you recall, we took more than three years to go trade with everybody. You can't build a nation without a family. You can't. What are you to develop? These are human beings. Where do you get human beings from? From family. How can you build a nation without a family? And if there are some ants, termites, rodents, eating the fabric of our family, it is incumbent on us as leaders and people to make sure that we get the proper values in place. As our parliament extends their sincere gratitude to you, Apostle, and the church, for supporting us to see through that bill. Please, brothers and sisters in Christ, never joke with your belief system. Your belief system. And once you have faith in your belief system, there is nothing that can be against you. We pass the law. We look up to those who claim to the leaders to ascend to it. I am sure when God says yes, nobody, nobody can say no. It will happen in life. The third one. The Church of Pentecost has done a lot for Madagascar. It is not for nothing that so far as this country is concerned. And I'm sure worldwide, you have the most massive following than any other church. The Holy Spirit is in action. And the church has contributed massively in the social infrastructure of this country. Whether it's education, whether it's health, whether it's anything you call dealing with a human being, particularly supporting the marginalized, the more growers. <laughs> Even to the extent of extending to those we are given the opportunity to recover correctional facilities in the prisons and all over who are there. What else do we want? To bless you and bless you, Master. Then you know. That our God lives. We all came from somewhere. And you know the devil. When the devil wants to destroy you, he's pitiless. But when you believe in God, you have nothing to fear. 
So here I am enjoying this day of glory. This day the Lord has made for all of us. And it is our prayer that God will reconcile us to Himself. Amen. And so when I read the invitation to me, I got a line in the invitation. And I want to quote that line for you. Because I have to think, what did the line say? I'll quote it for you. We would be honored to have you join us in this God's kingdom building agenda of good. Then I said to myself, Lord, it's rather an honor to me that you have found me worthy to join in the building of your kingdom. It is by your grace that I am alive. It is by your grace that I am a speaker. It is by your grace that I am worthy of honor. never has been by my might or by my power. I don't have any might. I don't have any power but what you have given me. So here I am sharing this word with you. I am not an apostle. I am a lawyer by training and a politician by career. But I can assure you that I was an active member of the Lawyers Christian Fellowship. And I joined the Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship International. That is where I was delivered. And since then, I've never been the same. And everything I have taken to the Lord in prayer, the Lord has never forsaken me. You don't say it by way of mouth, you do it in faith. Faith, faith, believing in Him, not just speaking. Ghana is a Christian nation. We use the word simpler, but over 70% of Ghanaians are Christians. If we have faith in God and believe in the word, what should Ghana be in this state? Please, brothers and sisters in Christ. The apostles have spoken on each the spirit to prevent the country Ghana. And that is why the team of the crusade says reconcile to him. Let us as a nation reconcile to God. Whatever problems we have, give it to him. It will be solved. After my prayer is in Kumasi, I read some people say in the social media that prayers cannot solve our problems. Then I said, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. 
Because even in America, when you take their currency notes, they say in God. The day that our first president declared Ghana as an independent nation, in his speech, he ended with God. He said, nothing can be done without God's intervention. And so, the power of prayer is the answer. I don't say just him and pray. No. It's the prayer that takes you to work and work in the right direction. Not the wrong direction. And I saw all of you gathered here. By the time you leave here, the blessings will take you, will carry you along. And will be reconciled in God Himself. With this, I assure you that we have a day, a number of days in Parliament, where we celebrate, where we praise and honor the Almighty God. Luckily, last year, we had Dr. Apostle himself to be with us. This year, we will be doing the same. And I'm sure you will come to join us. We have democracy voice. They lead us in prayers, in some administration, and that will bless all of us. I show you, you have a friend in Parliament. My distinguished delegates, my police are here in their numbers, and on a daily basis, we pray for Ghana, we pray for Ghanaians, we pray for ourselves, we do all we can to make sure that the 2024 elections is free, is fair, is credible, and is peaceful. The answer is in the Almighty God. And as I said, we fail in Him, we cannot fail us. I thank you all for this